There's a second impact to having a large amount of hard parsing going on in your Oracle database. This impact is more subtle, but just as serious to consider. Oracle is a multi-user system, and at any given time, there are many different SQL statements being processed by Oracle. If multiple processes are all hard parsing SQL statements, then each of these processes needs access to update the shared SQL area. And herein lies the problem, because if you have multiple processes, they're all accessing and modifying a shared data structure at the same time. That data structure will become corrupt, and the shared SQL area is no exception. Therefore, in order to protect data integrity, Oracle needs to synchronize access to the shared SQL area amongst all these different processes. If you've ever done any multi-threaded programming, you're already familiar with this concept. Any object that needs to be accessed and modified by multiple threads has to be protected such that only one thread is accessing the object at a time. In C Sharp, this is done using the lock keyword, and in Java, we use the synchronize keyword. As a result, the compiler creates a critical section of code, and a serialization construct is created to make sure that only one thread can be running in that section of code at a time. In this way, the object is prevented from becoming corrupted because only one thread can be in the critical section of code modifying the object at any time. In addition, while a thread is accessing a critical code section, no other thread can read data from the object. This makes sure that no other threads read the object while it is being modified and potentially receive incomplete or inconsistent data. All of these same concepts apply in Oracle. In Oracle, we use the term latch to describe the serialization construct used to synchronize access to a shared resource. The process that currently has access to the shared resource has the latch. A process that is waiting to gain access to the shared resource is said to be undergoing a latch wait. There are a number of resources that need to be shared across processes in Oracle, and therefore there are many different latches. For now though, we'll concentrate on the latch used to synchronize access to the shared SQL area. Understanding multi-threaded operations, how locking works and why it is needed, is a very difficult subject area to understand, and understanding the shared SQL area is no exception to this rule. Therefore, we'll start out with an analogy to help us understand what's happening here. Let's imagine a scenario where we have two different processes that are going to be writing to the same file. As you can see here, we have those two different processes on the left-hand part of the slide, and they're going to write the text of some famous speeches into our file over on the right-hand part of the slide. What we would expect is that we'd have the text of the Declaration of Independence in the file, then some sort of delimiter between the two speeches, and then the text of the Gettysburg Address. If both processes are writing the file at the same time, and they're not aware of what the other process is doing, this is probably not the result we're going to get. One possibility is that the first process would write out its data, but then this data would be overwritten by the text from the second process. In this case, the updates from the first process are simply lost. The data doesn't exist anymore, and this is clearly not what we want. If we're writing out some important financial data rather than the text of some famous speeches, this would clearly not be an acceptable solution. Another scenario that could occur is that the writes from the two different processes are interleaved together, and so we end up with some text that looks like this. Again, this is clearly not what we want, because now our file is pretty much unreadable. It's going to be impossible for any process reading this file to figure out what the original data was really supposed to be. The issue in both these scenarios is that the activities of these two processes aren't coordinated in any way. There isn't any mechanism to coordinate access to our file. It won't take long until two or maybe even more processes try to write to the file at the same time, and then the file is sure to become corrupt. So how do we solve this problem? We need to introduce some sort of synchronization mechanism to make sure that only one process can write to the file at a time. A very simple example of this could be creating a lock file, maybe something as simple as historicalspeeches.txt.lock. When a process comes along and wants to write to the file, it first checks to see if this lock file exists. If not, it will create the lock file, and then it can proceed to write to the file. If another process comes along and wants to write to the same file, it checks to see if the lock file exists. Seeing that one does, 
Now process number two knows that another process is already writing to that file, and process number two knows that it needs to wait. While this mechanism is relatively simplistic, it does illustrate how we can introduce some sort of locking mechanism to make sure that only one process is writing to the file, and we can preserve the data integrity of our file. So far, we've talked about the situation where two processes are trying to write to the file at the same time. However, the same scenario applies if one process is trying to write to the file and one process is trying to read the file. The situation here is that the process trying to read the file will likely read data that is incomplete or inconsistent if it tries to read the file while another process is writing to it. So in this case, the process that is trying to read the file also has to honor the lock file. And by seeing the lock file, it knows that it needs to wait to read the file until another process is finished writing the file. This analogy is very similar to what happens in Oracle when multiple processes are trying to hard parse SQL statements at the same time. Just like in our file example, we can't have all of these processes writing to the shared SQL area at the same time. So this is where Oracle introduces a latch to make sure that only one of these processes is modifying the shared SQL area at any given time. All the other processes that need to access the shared SQL area will experience a latch wait. In this way, Oracle is able to protect the shared SQL area from becoming corrupted like our file did in the file example. The trade-off is, though, that waiting on a latch to become available is, in and of itself, a very expensive operation. So let's take a look at this. When an Oracle process tries to acquire a latch but is unable to, the process that is waiting for the latch does not go to sleep and then check again after some period of time or go into a queue where it simply waits. Instead, the waiting process undergoes what is termed latch spinning, where it stays on the CPU and continually checks over and over again if it can acquire the latch. The reason why Oracle does this is because going to sleep and giving up the CPU and then getting back onto the CPU has a high cost. So if at all possible, the process wants to continue to loop and see if it can acquire the latch. So what is happening here is even though that the process is waiting, it is consuming CPU while it's looping. And this is CPU that isn't really doing any useful work. At some point, usually after 2000 iterations, the waiting process will give up trying to get the latch and put itself to sleep for a short period of time. When a process gives up the CPU like this and is replaced by another process, this activity is known as a context switch in operating system terminology. If you've studied operating systems, you know that context switching is something that you want to avoid because there's a lot of computational cost in switching from one process to another on the CPU. After a brief period of time, the process will wake up and will again be switched back into running status. At this point, it will try to acquire the latch again, and if the latch is unavailable, say a different process has acquired the latch while our waiting process was sleeping, then the latch spinning starts all over again. The waiting process will loop, consume CPU, while trying to acquire the latch, and then potentially go to sleep again, and this cycle will continue until the process is able to acquire the latch. What should be clear from this discussion is that contention is something that we want to do everything we can to avoid. First, because of how processes will spin while undergoing latch waits, we are going to end up using a lot of CPU while these processes loop on the CPU. And this is CPU resources that are just wasted, not available to do other useful work in our database. The second impact of contention is that we are really introducing a bottleneck into our system. Statements will only process as fast as they can gain access to the shared SQL area. And as we have discussed, if we have a lot of hard parsing going on, now the responsiveness of these statements is impacted because they have to spend time waiting to get access to the shared SQL area. One of the side effects of this bottleneck is that we understand that a system will only run as fast as its slowest component. So it doesn't matter how many CPUs we have, how much memory we add, or how fast our SAN is. It is this bottleneck that is going to limit the performance and the throughput of our system. What we have here is the computer science equivalent to sending all of our SQL statements down a one-lane road. It doesn't matter that we have a 12-lane superhighway on the other side. Our ultimate throughput is limited by this single-lane road, that is, gaining access to the shared SQL area, and all of our SQL statements need to travel down this road. So clearly, 
If we can design applications that avoid contention in the database, we want to learn how to do this, and we'll cover this in the next section.